In this episode of Boat Tech TV, we're looking at open water propeller tests. So in this, the final episode of this series, I wanted to give you a brief insight into something that I've been involved in for quite some time, and that's open water propeller tests. Now this is the data that you get when you design a propeller, um, just like so on the screen. Um, we're gonna test it in a confined environment so that we can understand its thrust, its torque, and its performance characteristics. Um, now open water propeller tests, we perform them, and it's called open water because they're performed in an ideal flow condition um, to get these design parameters. And how we do that is we have two possibilities. One is a towing tank and the other one is a cavitation tunnel. The towing tank is effectively a long, thin swimming pool where we can control all the parameters and we can tow ships and we can tow propellers up and down it to measure their performance. The other facility which I'm more familiar with is a cavitation tunnel. and uh, This is effectively like a wind tunnel. Uh, it's a big circle of water and you can push it around at different speeds and then when you put a propeller in this flow you can then measure its performance characteristics. And this is really important because this is what we need for the open water propeller test. So, a, a propeller test in a, in a towing tank is going to look something like this. First, the towing tank has a carriage that pulls either the ship or the propeller along the channel. And on this, we bolt what's called a propeller board. And the idea behind this is it's a form of propulsion. It's a shaft that will turn the propeller. Um, we have very specific distances that we have to set. Um, the distance from the propeller to the strut, from the propeller to the surface of the water. So there's a whole range of things that we have to um, consider. But the idea behind this one is it's, it's very much like a ship that the um, propeller is being dragged through the water to perform its, its, its data. The next facility is a cavitation tunnel and this basically runs the same test as the towing tank with one slight difference and the difference is that the, the propeller stays where it is and it still has a motor driving it but the water is pushed around instead of the model being dragged through the water. There are other differences and it's to do with scaling atmospheric pressure but I won't go into that in this episode. Now then, so to think of the idea behind it, if you imagined a vessel, like it's on the screen right now, um, you've got the, this is the modeling the stern. You can see the flow direction is coming past the propeller and the propeller is fastened on a shaft and at the end of the propeller, it'll have a, a boss cap or something like this to, to smooth the flow as it goes into the water. Now, if you take the ship away, what we're after with an open water test is the test that's conducted for the propeller without the presence of the hull. So the water's coming this way and the propeller's here. Um, we need to find some way of, of propelling that. So what we actually do, and this is the funny thing with the open water test, is we, we mount the propeller backwards on a dynamometer uh, like so. So if this was a vessel and it was propelled this way, we would actually mount the propeller here and then we put a dummy cone on here. Um, and this is what we're gonna show you here. We add it like this and you can see there that the um, we have a, the propeller boat is mounted backwards and this allows then that the propeller then sees clean fresh flow so there's no influence there's no eddies there's no uh, wake distribution anything it's, it's absolutely uniform and we can get really good clean data for the propeller so that when we do introduce a hull and we do introduce a ship into the uh, equation we can work it all out it's very very straightforward so this one here, um, this is the towing carriage. It's, uh, it's just a little lenticular shaped boat with a motor in and you just tow it down. Um, and and we, okay, we vary the speed of the boat and we vary the RPM and we get all the different parameters from the propeller. It looks, um, again, there's, there's um, certain parameters, again, I won't go into, it gets quite complicated very quickly. Um, but the idea is that we have a motor inside it and then we have a dynamometer. And the dynamometer has, it measures thrust and it measures torque. And those are the key things that we're after in this test is the thrust and the torque in relation to the RPM. So the idea is that we would run the propeller at different speeds. In a cavitation tunnel, it's really easy. All you have to do is the propeller's on the dynamometer and you just wind it up, wait a few minutes, gather the data, wind it up, wait a few minutes. And because it's continually going round, it just keeps on going. In a towing tank, it's typically 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet. You run out of room very quickly. Um, so what you have to do is you have to pick your 
points on the graph and you'll run one speed and then you'll get the data. Then you have to wind it back, wait for it all to settle, run the test again, wind it all back and wait for it to settle, so on and so forth. So it's a, it's a systematic way of building it up. And we have a coefficient here, which I have not explained in the TV show. It's called the J coefficient. Uh, Naval architects, hydrodynamics guys will know all about the J coefficient. It's called the advanced coefficient. Um, but it's a non-dimensional form of um, speed. There's a lot more to it than that. But we use that instead of RPM or in, of knots or whatever. And it's just a way of non-dimensionalizing the data so that when we scale it up, we can do so. And we run the test from a very, very low RPM, which is a high J value, um, to uh, a very, very high RPM, as high as the dynamometer will go, which is a very, very low J value. And again, it's, it's, it's Naval Architects, we love our coefficients. Again, but I won't, I won't press that too hard. So, the test here, you can see on the image here, this is um, what we call a dog ear propeller. This, is, uh, uh, this would be a Navy propeller. It's a very, very quiet propeller. It's got an unusual blade-shaped design. In the background, you can see the dynamometer. Um, and this is again pointing forward, so the flow would hit the front of the cone that you would see there. Um, and then throughout the test, we can take photographs and we can study, you can see this one's cavitating. Not so good for a Navy propeller, you want it really quiet so it doesn't make any noise. Um, but we can run it through its paces and we see how the blades align, if the blades are all pitched correctly, it all comes very clear. And it's really nice because it blends art and science. It's the science it takes you so far, but then the pictures tell you everything else. And the end result of this test is what we call the open water diagram. And now when you ask me to perform a powering for a sailboat propeller or a commercial propeller, we would typically go to a similar design, Autoprop we have in the um, lots and lots of open water data for it. So we would pull one of these diagrams and then we would work out the RPM and the speed from that, we would then uh, know what the advanced coefficient was. And as you can see, there's a certain point where it reaches a, um, a crest, and that's the optimum efficiency. Uh, the top blue line there is optimum efficiency. And we wanted to design somewhere close to that. So we'd use this diagram to then take it and design a full-scale vessel. And just finally, um, so what you can see here, is the propeller is slowly rotating and we can zoom in and you can see one of the blades as it goes around and these, these helical bubbles are, are what causes, they can drill through rudders, they can cause all sorts of problems but in small amounts they're actually benign, they're very very, they're very safe, they, they, it's, it's a part of the process and we can actually map this on as we're doing the tests and understand that it needs to be less than a certain percentage, typically 10 or 5 percent and they, they won't cause any damage but it causes noise and you can hear it as you can hear on the video right now um, and this is something that you'll hear if you're pushing your engine to the to the limit it sounds like a tumble dryer with a couple of quarters in bouncing around all that sort of stuff but anyway that's a very very brief introduction to an open water test um, we're going to touch more on this in the next series and explore a little bit further of the bubbles why the bubbles happen and the damage they can do and also, we'll run through a power prediction showing you how we actually do, from soup to nuts, the propeller design. But just for now, uh, my name is Rod Sampson. I'm the US agent for Brunton's Propellers here in Virginia Beach. Um, it's been my pleasure to do these 12 episodes in Series 1 of the, uh, the TV show. If you have any inquiries, um, my contact details are on the screen. And if you are around in about two weeks' time, we'll be at the Annapolis at the Boat Show on booth C12. Uh, come down, say hello, and uh, ask us questions about the propellers, and buy one, obviously. <laughs> but apart from that, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time in a couple of weeks' time when we launch our next series. Thanks very much.